Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Research Hub community call, where today we are very lucky to have Dr. Yu Wang joining us. Um, we're going to start every other week or so uh, having journal clubs and AMAs just to, to break up the community call rhythm and uh, get some more like cool events going on. So yeah, today, uh, Yu, who's been a part of Research Hub for a couple months now, um, has agreed to present a Research Hub original publication entitled A Cloud Science Community Powered by Digital Tokens. Uh, obviously, this applies a lot to what we're hoping to do with Research Hub. And uh, you, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you came up with this idea like independently of Research Hub before you had heard of what we're trying to accomplish. So yeah, really excited to hear about like your background, like what brought you to this idea, and then discuss the paper as a group. Thanks for uh, joining. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, um, everyone, for coming. And thank you, Patrick, for inviting me. And I will briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yu Wang, and I was a graduate student uh, in, uh, in Harvard Medical School under the supervision of Dr. Zhao Church and in Hong Ying in the Waste Institute. And I graduated in 2019, and I, uh, I did a very short postdoc now I'm in the biotech company. Uh, startup. Um, yeah, so as uh, Petra mentioned, I started to uh, probably the, the, the story is like this. I, I, I you know, in 2017, I was trying to publish my first paper. I really hated the publishing system at that time. Then I started thinking if there are any better ways uh, to do it. And also, I'm a huge, no, I, I, I like to look, look at those tech companies a lot. And I'm trying to think, oh, what we can learn from those. Uh, uh, the world we've already been familiar every day, you know. The, um, so I, I will probably just start with sharing my a few slides. Uh, right. right. Can you guys see the slides now? Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So basically, the, the title of the of the paper, I uh, okay. So, so as 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 a before that, before I started, to, there's a quick uh, interesting thing here is uh, as a Patrick mentioned, this publication was published as a as an original article, and actually this publication uh, we were trying to publish it before in Bar Archive. It was actually reject, rejected by Bar Archive because they think there is no data in it. But I'm really glad this community, this platform, provide a more open uh, community to publish uh, things without data. Um, so basically the, the title of the, of the essay I we wrote is uh, a cloud scientific community empowered by digital, digital tokens. And basically the, the, the first thing I wanna talk about is that if, if you look at this, uh, this rank, it's, it basically is most innovative companies in, of 2021. And then you are, uh, I'm sure you, are, you guys are very, all, all very familiar with all the 10 companies on rank of the top 10 and in this list, as you can see, because it's, it's everything it's uh, in, in, in our daily life. And it's Apple, Alphabet, Amazon. And but for our scientists, there is another thing also in our daily life is science, but it's the science should be the most innovative thing in the world. But unfortunately, it's not, even in one of the top 10 companies, uh, besides Pfizer, Pfizer is a pharma, I would, it's, it's still a little bit further from the science we are talking about today. So is there any other ways? Can we create um, innovative companies around science to make science more innovative? And then basically there are a few things I would like to share with uh, the community today. Uh, the first part basically is cloud publishing and cloud source peer review. As uh, I think most of us are already very familiar with uh, uh, this topic as uh, uh, Research Hub is, uh, is, uh, is also a cloud, a cloud publishing system. And but basically here you publish, so you receive questions, comments. The one thing I would like to introduce or add on this thing, it's, it's basically this kind of like machine learning based uh, uh, article, uh, uh, distribution. You know, I, I, I'm not sure uh, how many of you uh, are uh, using TikTok. I'm, uh, I'm like addicted to TikTok, you know, which is unfortunate. Um, but I would say this app, you know, it's really good at finding what you want to see. 
and also what you like and what your background is. And so I think that the algorithm behind this can really be beneficial to this platform in terms of how to um, you know, share or um, promote articles to, to other scientists, you know, here to promote uh, peer review. Because if you don't get the articles within your expertise or you are interested in, you will, you, you will not open it or read it. If you are very interested in certain articles, and suggested by this algorithm, I, 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 I imagine you will basically spend more time and are all more willing uh, to uh, spend more time to do the peer review. And this is one thing. Uh, and the second part is basically credit digitalization and the provision. Another, beside the publishing system, another big, a big problem in academia is how to share credit. I think right now the system is mostly you know, winner takes all or it uh, distributed equally, mostly you know, winner takes all. So I was discussing with Patrick earlier uh, before this call is, uh, you know, the winner takes all, you think that higher, uh, you know, the, the top of the chain will not, will, will also, will not be affected, but actually not. You know, the graduate students credit can be taken by the uh, postdoc, those postdocs, Credits are taken by the PI. The small PI can be taken, the credits can be taken by the big PI. The big PI's credit can be taken by Nobel laureate. Even the Nobel laureate who is on the top of the chain can also lose their patent to another institution. So basically no one can escape from this chain and no one is happy about it. But unfortunately that's how we are doing it right now. So the, the question here is, can we create a new system to, to make it better. And here we basically to share, share two idea here. One is basically to digitalize the credit to make it to similar to you know, startups or companies into shares. You can basically sharing the credit, you can split them into uh, a, a, a portion like 30%, 10%, and based on that your actual, uh, actual uh, 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 contribution, you can get the corresponding amount of uh, credit. And this is one thing, another part is more like a fun project or art project here. It's like it also is, I you know honestly, even even though I, I watch Nobel uh, Prize, I, I can like every year, I don't like the system because I think this is a winner takes all system and size is not like, even though they made the, the arm, very original distribution. This one field can cannot be just uh, be and um, being built by just the three uh, people's contribution. There are like a thousands of people who contribute into this field, and everyone should get their credit. So I was thinking, yeah, okay, what well, what if uh, we create this kind of like uh, you know a uh, digital Nobel law like prize and. It's not like a, a awarded to a single word, like up to three uh, people, everyone who contributes in the field, they can get their own personal like badge uh, here as, as, a, as a reward. It's more like a chocolate for a card. A card. If you look at Harry Potter, you know, the, the, the wizard and witches are in those uh, chocolate for cards. You can also get this badge for yourself if, uh, if you are contributing to a certain uh, Field. And also, this is potentially one fun way, uh, you know, to attract uh, users uh, as they want to receive their badge um, as well. You not to interrupt, but we're still seeing the title slide. Oh, 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 okay. Wait. Or uh, how about now? You are, you are. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, let's just do this. Yeah, so basically this is a fun part, the, 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 the science award and also the, the tokens for credit sharing. And, and the third part is basically the e-commerce. And we are very familiar with e-commerce already because we're in this kind of like already used Amazon um, every day, eBay every day. We basically uh, buy purchase stuff on Amazon, we trade stuff on eBay. Uh, but we don't really have this such systems in, in for scientific products. 
and uh, one way made, I made a purchase uh, uh, for a reagent, we probably still go to the 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 under website to to supplement the order, get a quote, and submit to our system. It's a really slow system, I would say. There are and also you don't really read the reviews uh, that um, that well, and also if you have any um, other other reagent, you kind of like you only use once you you don't really want you don't really need it anymore um basically there is no way to kind of trade those second-handed uh products um so um then we can think okay what if we can also bring this e-commerce idea into the scientific community to build to build this e-commerce platforms on the platforms you can basically purchase and uh, sell uh reagent and also actually um I think one rising uh, field is this, this kind of a cloud uh, um, science, uh, cloud experiment. You basically outsource your experiment to uh, companies. Here you may also outsource to uh, other scientists who uh, actually who have the bandwidth or who has a resource to do your experiment. Basically, it's more like a collaboration, but instead of collaborating uh, by a collaborating agreement uh, written in paper. You are basically uh, using uh, the platform to sign a contract and use uh, to trade a service with each other, which can be a more efficient way to build collaboration rather than just uh, uh, to uh, go around and ask if they want to collaborate. Most of the time, they probably don't want don't want to collaborate because they cannot get enough credit uh, from you. And, and lastly, I think the, um, in, the, uh, in the paper we basically discuss is, okay, if we want to use this kind of like uh, introduce tokens into this system, how can we build this token systems? So the idea here is a multi-tier, it's more of a web two plus web three, uh, a combination of the two tokens, basically the, for the basic tokens, it's issued by the platform, it's a centralized platform. But it's 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 issued by a platform. It cannot be easily uh, traded with outside uh, tokens or you know the the the, the real uh, cryptocurrency. But the good thing is um, it's simple, and you don't have to worry about your money goes uh, you, you know, uh, your wealth goes up or goes down every day. You basically see your tokens increasing every day, and also you can see you can use those tokens to. Uh, to do some very basic functions on the platforms. For example, you know, if the platforms will have more partners in the future, like uh, you know, uh, conference organizers or uh, you know, general subscription or something, uh, or like those uh, reagent companies, uh, basically those tokens can be used to uh, to trade those uh, uh, coupons from the from the uh, from the companies. The second tier is basically the we call uh, is more advanced tokens. It's more like Web three, where if it, uh, you know it has a, its real values, you know the real monetary values with it. You can use it to purchase service or to purchase reagent. Um, it can be linked with a currency on uh, you know, or not just uh, directly with uh, uh, by itself. Uh, but this is more like a Web3 version uh, of the tokens. And the final version of the tokens is just like honorary version of the tokens, special tokens, for example, uh, the NFT we want to distribute as a, sign, a scientific reward uh, in, in a, in a, for the community. You cannot easily trade it, but there is a possibility you can auction it. And if, if it's from a very uh, a famous scientist, someone may want to purchase those nft um and i think that's uh that's all just for the quick um uh, like uh, this a uh, description of the of the entire uh assay and i i think we probably want to open to leave more time to questions um from the audience and discussion and yeah thank you thanks for going over everything really appreciate it um yeah so so for everybody else, kind of the structure of how we've done these events in the past is uh, we'll take 15 minutes now and answer questions that are shared on the Research Hub paper page. 
And then 15 minutes after that, so after um, like the bottom of the hour, uh, we'll start to like open up the discussion within this call. So if anybody has a question, they hadn't posted it on the paper page, we can just talk about it live. So you has already picked out two questions from the Research Hub page. So um, let's get started with those. Yeah, so um, I, I went through the, the questions uh, on the Research Hub. It was, they are all amazing questions, I would say. They are very interesting questions. So uh, there are also there are many questions. I, I uh, couldn't able uh, to fit all of them in. So I kind of pick two questions I would think is uh, pretty interesting uh, to discuss here today. One is basically if the research hub system or any similar system, the, this kind of like a review system should stay anonymous or like transparent. And I, I think it's, it's, it can be an open discussion here. Um, in my opinion, I would like to, uh, to make it transparent. The reason for that is I, I feel the current system is kind of like building this toxic environment to put reviewers and authors into the opposite side of a paper. So if you, like, if you imagine if to go to a conference, everyone is transparent. They are not staying anonymous. You know, they go to posters, they discuss their science, they have a very like a fruitful and uh, nice conversation. It's not necessary to be, you know, criticized. You know, if there is some flaws of the experiment, you can you can still uh, bring them up, but just not in a in a in a in a in a, in a way that will trigger the defense systems from others. I think it's uh, even though you stay transparent, you can still uh, Kind of like a criti be critical, um, but just not criticize others' papers. You can still give suggestions, and um, you know that's. I think that's how I think these systems uh, can be. But uh, there, there can be other opinions. I would like to hear more, actually. And uh, uh, Patrick, should we open to discussion, or we should finish these questions first, and then we can. Um, make it more like an open discussion. I think let's uh, let's finish these questions first, and then we can open it up for everybody. Because I know there were a couple comments on like anonymity and how that would potentially fit in with peer review. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. And also the qu second question is actually from Patrick. Uh, well, he asked is what can be the primary uh, value prop of this platform from the perspective of academic scientists. Um, I think it's. It's, it's a really hard question because different scientists have a different need. And for example, for someone, uh, you know, like a, a, a postdoc who has been staying in the lab for years with a very low uh, salary, you know, I think making some additional money on a platform can be a very attractive thing um, from the platform. For like uh, some graduate student who I haven't been publishing any papers who is uh, uh, very uh, you know, excited to publish his first paper, but also frustrated by, uh, by the current publishing systems. You know, in order to publish paper in an open uh, platform, that could be the most uh, attractive feature of the platforms. And for PIs, they may, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they may need funding. What they need is funding and the reputation uh, building funding and get the opportunities for funding. I'm oh, sorry, uh, building reputation and uh, uh, get the opportunities for funding may be, uh, you know, uh, interesting to them. So I would say it's basically, uh, you know, to first is uh, to make the platforms have more functions, as many functions as possible. And second is basically uh, to reach out to from the from the perspective of users to reach it, to target them uh, by like fixing uh, their um, their their uh, the biggest problem for them. I think that's uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's actually um, pretty similar. I saw a tweet yesterday that was a paper from ASAP Bio that uh, looked at motivations for why people share preprints. And the number one motivation is actually getting feedback from the community. A couple other things like citing it in grant applications as well. But yeah, I think feedback is probably the number one thing people would be looking for who would adopt these types of like, or use these tools as early adopters. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. I, that's the that's, that's the questions I picked. To maybe we can uh, go over more questions from our research hub. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Ricardo, I know you have a bunch of questions in here. Is there is there anything else you'd like to ask? I just wanted to make a quick comment on the anonymity. Uh, so, yeah, you know, anonymity is always a big uh, kind of like point of question when it comes to this kind of platforms. And uh, the, the reason why I made that, uh, you know, that question was basically because I think, you know, most of the times you would probably like to be, uh, you know, yourself, so non-anonymous, but there could be, you know, some instances in which you, you know, could, you know, prefer to be. So uh, my question could actually be more like, do you think there should be a sort of like a toggle that you could kind of like enable where you could be, you know, either anonymous or non-anonymous depending on the situation, or you should be always transparent in what you do. I'm in favor of being transparent, but I could see, you know, some situations where people would like to uh, not be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I mean, some in, in some like you know, as as a as as a platform, we the 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 I think the big thing is we always think uh, more scenarios. You know, the the more we think, the better for the uh, the better the user experience is. Um, so I think it, give the options to stay uh, anonymous. It can be can be a very useful feature if they want to stay anonymous. And and do you think uh, anonym? Um non-anonymity should be incentivized so sh someone should be incentivized to you know stay transparent while kind of be decentivized to be anonymous or it should be kind of like on the same level and anyone should be free to kind of like choose whatever they prefer no i i would say that that's a, I, I think that's based on the, the 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 value of the 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 platform or the culture of the platform if we, we are trying to build an open platform and encourage people to have this open discussion we should basically incentivize people to be open. Uh, you know, for example, we give more uh, RSC if they stay open. Um, you know, you can still get some, but if you stay anonymous, but if you stay open, we can have you, you know, give you extra, something like that. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, for context, um, like the leading platform for post-publication peer review, uh, PubPeer, they have anonymity as part of their platform and, and even their founder stayed anonymous for the first five years of the project because he was worried about the professional consequences of enabling like open peer review like there would be people in his field who'd be upset about that so yeah i think anonymity is a, a tough question there's a lot kind of baked into it um jonathan yeah i i wanted to also add to this anonymity discussion something that i think i find interesting that we have not touched upon is if you uh, have anonymous responses and you have these upvote downvote mechanisms or reward mechanisms on the platform, you could potentially um, kind of reward the merit of the response or the merit of the paper uh, more um, objectively than if it is attached to a certain name. Somebody who already has, for example, a lot of reputation will have an easy time gaining more of it. Or if you're uh, an established professor, you have more respect and you get, you easily manipulate so to say or your the, the, the audience is biased so if you as have like bold and then you use these um, mechanisms of reward and uh, upvote downvote then you can actually much more easily di display the honest opinion of the people based on the merit of the scientific contribution that's maybe something that i think we should also consider what do you think about that? You? Yeah, I think that's a very uh, interesting point. That's you know you are you are you are talking about from the other direction. Uh, basically, if it's the paper is from a more like a famous uh, scientist, and people are uh, biased. Uh, I think I think that's 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 true, and you know if, especially they are. <laughs> established and scientists who have published a lot of uh, you know, articles uh, uh, in, in the field. Mm, I kind of think that's natural and I don't really have a solution now, but uh, what, what, what do you think, Jonathan? 
may I respond? I also think it's very natural. And that's, I think, why it should be for, for, for come, right? Like, I think it also includes institutions, especially those, because if you have like a Harvard or MIT, or then you have uh, Oxford, Cambridge, or you are some random university in, in Africa, it has a different um, like appearance in the eye of the reader. And I think it would be great if we could use um, actual blockchain technology to prove that institutions like Harvard and scientists from those institutions are there, but they are in the system, they are equal to the others, you know, so that we can uh, show that the, the discussion is what is the merit instead of um, the the names of the institution, right? So that we have, an, yeah, I, I think that would be important on a platform like this. Yes, and also I think that uh, to some degree, it's actually our mindset is already trained by this current system. Uh, people are publishing more on nature or science or from Harvard. They basically, they should receive more credit or they are better than the others. Uh, like instead of looking at the real science, the real data uh, behind that. I think one thing we can you know, I, I really hope this system can change or a research hub can also to help us to build this new mindset is we look at the data more, you know, uh, people are criticizing or uh, pay attention to the, to, the, to, the, to the data rather than just uh, the institutions, you know. Um, we, we can, we can, well, they can be some, we, we may need some mechanism to trigger that for example you know, before i think one thing be, before people are just trained to look at just the the journal uh, titles because uh, you know the paper is longer and longer you know if you were like looking at one paper it's like six figures each figure is like the, like eight ten panels and uh, you don't really have the time to look at their data more carefully and you just oh it's from nature and it must be good it's from harvard it must be good but if you like, let's say, cut them into a one panel, like in, in the 90, 1980s, probably just one, 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 one figure, uh, one like, can be a, a paper. If we cannot encourage that, and the people will, it's just one figure, people will look at more into their science part rather than you know, other things besides science. Yes, Kobe, do you have a thought here? Um, yeah, about anonymity, I. Yeah, I, I guess I had a question, but um, in addition to to that, I'm, I'm going to say my two cents about anonymity because we did discuss it in our recent conversation, and you guys all make good points. Anonymity is important, and one of the things we uh, chatted about the best idea is to, if we go with the anonymous route, um, we would at least showcase like a person's reputation but not necessarily the exact number so it can be traced to the uh to the exact person but more like uh the percentile of reputation they are so you can see you're not necessarily going to see like uh, a person's name you're going to see like uh, the percentile of reputation they are because i do agree like for example when i upvote on research hub i tend to upvote more content by our editors and that's not necessarily, and I, I do, I am aware that there is a bias there. I don't like it, but there is a human bias in uh, in there. So definitely something needs to be done here. Now, my second question was uh, actually not about anonymity, but Joyce, do you want to finish up the anonymity discussion before we move on to other topics? I think we can move on to other topics. Yeah. You yeah, I guess uh, it's less of a particular question, but more like a seeking to understand. You know, um, I saw that you presented a slide. There was like a slide about e-commerce, and I wanted to get further clarification about how that would work in practically speaking. Uh, it seems like a marketplace where like uh, of ideas and, and also like uh, physical goods, like reagents and stuff like that. And I know that she also had like uh, three tiers of tokens and mm -hmm. some of them could be purchased and other ones, um, you know, are not, can not be purchased like NFTs and stuff like that. And I wanted to get a sense of like, uh, uh, like it, how do you foresee like this trading taking place? Like, do I need as a scientist, if I wanted to buy something like a reagent 
would I need to purchase tokens or would they be like uh, kind of like given to me based on some merit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a very interesting question here is like, uh, you know, the e-commerce you know, itself is a very big thing. You know, it's uh, if you just look at the e-commerce in our real communities, it's including many things. So uh, we may have to split it into different sections to discuss in terms of how to exactly uh, implement it. And, uh, you know, just to talk about the tokens and the purchasing, um, I, I was I would say for the purchasing side, and I think one of the questions in a research hub is how you know if people sell if they use the, the the tokens that itself the value is fluctuating, and will you lose uh, money by just selling on this? So that's the second tier. Uh, that's why we kind of like said the second tier. Uh, we kind of link these tokens to a real currency. The the fluctuation of that currency. It's relatively stable than uh, than than the uh, than RFC, uh, hopefully. You know, and for example, you know the real currency in the world, like US dollars or something else. You know, um, but also I, I would like to um, you know the secondhand reagent thing. You know, I think I I kind of like I like to bring up one system that has is a really small e-commerce system in China. People are not very uh, hasn't really uh, paid attention to it is, um, you know, people are trading those second, second hand handed uh, stuff on the platforms, but instead of just market it into certain like a uh, uh, real money, they kind of like trade as uh, those small red flowers. It's so, like you can gain red flowers by uh, giving giving away your stuff, and also if you want to purchase something. Uh, you can also uh, give uh, uh, you know give uh, your red flowers to someone who has this product. And more like you know showing uh, a goodwill to others by sharing stuff rather than just uh, uh, sell and purchase. I'm I'm the mo most of talking about between scientists. You know we've already actually in Harvard there is a system. Uh, there is a website link. Uh, 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 in the campus, uh, you can basically uh, list your second-handed uh, stuff on it. But I stayed in Harvard for nearly eight years. I never opened it once. I feel it can have a better. I know mean, people have the need. People can like send the emails around to ask for an agent. Uh, but I, I feel there there should be a better system for for that. And this can be a system. You know, for, for people to share their stuff, their their uh, unused or second-hand reagent to others, and if 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 you worry about the quality, then just directly purchase from from the from the vendor who has a higher quality standard to see. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, very interesting about the red flower uh, mechanism. Thanks for the feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So if anybody in the audience has any questions, we'll open it up and to get started. One thing I wanted to mention to you is uh, you kind of work in this concept of like peer scientists are allowed to do peer reviews on research outputs. So I'm curious what you think of allowing like non peers. So or, or I guess like how do you define peer? Is that somebody within your own field? And then like, are, are you open uh, for someone like totally outside of academia to be able to share peer reviews on a scientist work? I'm just curious what you think about like the peer concept. You know, it's uh, the in terms of the peers, I feel it's a very like you know different people may have different definitions for it. I was I I was initially thinking about peers as uh, uh, everyone who has a scientific background. It's not re restricted to uh, the one who is doing exactly the same in the exact same field as. Uh, as we are, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, it, I mean, it's interesting. It really depends on if the research gate should open to uh, the entire public or they should stay in as a, a academia or scientific community. You know, if it stays as a scientific community, you know, the, the people here are already, you know, within the definition of my, uh, my definition. I think everyone on the community, on the research hub can com com comment. Especially, you know, I think I will kind of encourage people who are not in the 
uh, same field of comment to read others' uh, manuscript and to comment um, because you know nowadays the, the the papers are more and more interdisciplinary. Um, one you know scientists from one field they cannot really uh, judge the entire thing uh, of uh, of uh, one manuscript. Uh, I, I that's why I also think we should encourage people from different discipline to to comment, especially you know. A biologist, honestly, I'm I'm a biologist. Uh, I'm no offense to other biologists. We we are not really good at uh, you know uh, numbers or like uh, uh, statistics and physics. Um, at least I mean, I'm not really good at it. Um, I think if a, if a, my paper has been reviewed by a statistician or someone who has more you know math background, I would be probably be more confident in terms of the, all the statics analysis I use in my paper. Uh, that, that's, that's something I, yeah. But, you know, then I think that's a question, uh, as I mentioned, if we should open a uh, research hub to an entire public, to non-scientific uh, people, yeah. Yeah, thanks for expanding. I, I think it's like some kind of comment curation to make sure that like the author's time isn't being wasted you know, so that way people outside of academia can share criticisms, but someone validates that they actually are worth the author's time to respond to. Um, Jonathan? When I was thinking about this stuff, I thought about like flares, like flares on Reddit, where you can basically, you can earn membership, so to say, in like this and in this hub, you, are, you have, for example, say physics and chemistry background. Then you have the flares of physics and chemistry. Or you might also comment on biology, and if you participate in this discussion and you value, you make valuable contribution, then you might earn the flair. And so you can show off what kind of expertise you have, because then you encourage like universal geniuses like Teslas who can contribute to multiple disciplines. But you can also have people who are just like single field experts and really deep in that. And I think that would be a, a nice way to, to do it, because then everyone could participate. But the flair would indicate whether they have the background or not. So the public could also participate, have no flair, and earn one. So you could really be a citizen scientist, actually get the credit not from a degree or from some kind of uh, yeah, institution, but from the community itself, which says, yeah, th what this person thinks is scientific, according to the other scientists. <laughs> so I think that that would be quite uh, ideal. Yeah, I think also one one feature can it can be so like you know as an author you can invite other you know for example you are doing microscopy and uh, you want to other microscope scopists to, to uh, basically comment on the on the microscopy region of the of the paper you can basically set a, a number of uh, uh, you know, uh, tokens um, you know you can you invite invite others uh, to to review on this particular section. Cool. Uh, Joanna? Hi, you, and thank you for the concept. Uh, do you think this could be used as a cloud between universities all over the world? I mean, even as an exchange system. And also, I like the idea of uh, tokens and uh, incentivizing research. Yeah, so do you think... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Is, yeah, it is viable as a system between universities. Sorry, uh, 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 correct me if I understand the question uh, wrong. I, I, you mentioned the, the system can be used uh, by different universities across the globe. Um, I mean, it's... Ideally, yes, but given the current geopolitical uh, pressures uh, across the whole world, I I honestly don't know. And I wish one day we can become one, mm -hmm. one platform. But I, I think uh, based on my understanding of the current situation, um, at least China may want to build their own. Um, you know, we can, we, can, we can connect with each other. Uh, uh, but I, I think I think they 
they can they, they may be open uh, to connect if the if the network at least from China's perspective uh, if the network stays in uh, academia not extended into the public because once it becomes public you don't really know what can happen on the platform there is no control anymore uh, second is they they can connect but they they may want their their own uh, platforms uh, it's just because uh, if there are any uh, conflict ha that happens, for example, right now, what's going on in the world, you know, uh, the even research hub is uh, may not be you know, directly willingness to do that. There may be uh, under some pressure to to cut the you know uh, the uh, access from countries that they you know, they may have to cut. So that's from that perspective, I think it's uh, you know. It can be a, like a, a, a kind of a consortium or like basically a big network that has multiple networks, smaller network in it. Uh, but I don't think one platform can uh, cover the entire globe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an interesting point. If it's not fully decentralized, like uh, if it's a cloud platform, um, wherever the like host company is, they have like regulations to deal with. So, for instance, for Research Hub. Uh, like we have to make sure that anyone who signs up and earns tokens isn't on like the United States like active terrorism list. So there are some like weird kind of regulations that I'm sure exist in like every country if it's going to be a cloud based platform that's run by a nonprofit or uh, for profit company. Um, Sati? Uh, yeah, I had two questions. Uh, so the first one is in kind of in line with what Yuana was asking, I think. Uh, so since uh, assuming that this won't assuming that this won't be a single community because there would be all uh, there would always be competition between uh, communities trying to establish such a system uh, do you have any thoughts on the transferability of web uh, in between communities so for example citation is sort of a universal uh, metric that we can track right now but what about if i build up a huge reputation on say research hub and then I am get interested in Vita DAO, for example, and then I have to take it over from there. So, do you see uh, transferability in Web or unlike sort of a universal system uh, for reputation itself, or do you think it should be uh, specific to one community? I think I think that's a very interesting point. So, you know, if if we would if we would look at the our like the real world, right? Even for the you know, we have Amazon, we have Walmart, we have more Target, blah blah blah, and we have Twitter, we have Facebook. They are always competing with each other. Uh, but for the research uh, side, we, we cannot really see. You know, we had a research gate before, and uh, we you know they are also uh, uh, peer uh, the peer J or something as as for similar things I, I i mean we have to go back to the to understand where those platforms from the first is basically those uh you know uh one one reason is capital reasons you know people see the uh see see, see the capital interest in in those in this field then they want to get their own big cakes so they start to build a, a competing platform so that's one that's that's one reason which i i, I mean I mean, I haven't seen that in the scientific community yet. That's also why there is no uh, many uh, uh, innovative companies in the field because there is not much capital interest. But we can, uh, this can can change in the future. The second part is, well, the new platforms is all is always from a new need, right? If we can like, if uh, our if this platform has some like problems and that needs to be solved if we can already solve it. And I don't really see a new platform coming out. But if uh, we have a problem and it, it's, it cannot be solved, if we all we, we haven't solved it, then the new platforms can come in and to solve the problem. Then it starts with people kind of still think, oh, this is a new platform, it already solved that problem. I'm kind of like, I don't really like to reset hub anymore or something like that they may switch into a new platforms. So as long as we keep updated with uh, the, you know, to solve all the needs uh, for scientists, I, I think people are, you know, it's a hard to switch platform. That's why it's uh, people are kind of sticky with, uh, you know, 
it's kind of like also from the user experience, you, you are used to one platform, it's hard to switch to another one. For example, you know, the, the Facebook spends so much money trying to steal users from TikTok, but still it's really hard. And because people are used to TikTok and they just uh, stick to that. And yeah, so there is a huge cost to switch platforms. As well. Okay, just to make sure that I'm getting this right, uh, there would be like you would have to start from zero uh, when you switch a platform, right? Uh, yes. Well, if there's two, these two platforms they are competing with each other, uh, I guess that they are not willing to collaborate. If they are willing to collaborate, there are definitely a possibility to connect with each other, you know, to share. Uh, uh, things. I, I think that's at the end is uh, is uh, more of a business decision between the two platforms. Or is um, if this community is a government is like a DAO is governed by the users. The users it depends on the users' vote. Users would like to make it connected. Then it has to be connected because that's the principle of uh, the community. Thank you. Yeah, Ricardo. Yeah, I, I like that we're talking about needs because my two questions were exactly about the needs of different, you know, kind of like target audience or uh, let's say peers. So you, you, you told us you're a biologist and I'm an engineer, so we definitely have different needs. Mm -hmm. um, and this is why um, I wanted to ask you what kind of like you were talking about, you know, developing different features uh, for, for a platform, how uh, much, you know, how all encompassing you think a platform should be to kind of like fulfill all the needs of different kind of like targets. Just to give you an example, um, really, um, I used a couple of times um, a research gate to ask for specific protocols for something that we're using in the lab. And I think this is, this would not be of much interest for other kinds of populations, uh, let's say kind of like other type of scientists. So how do you uh, feel like could be possible to kind of like put together all these people and create a need that could be you know common for everyone or you think it should be it could be easier to start from specific needs that are tailored for a specific kind of like set of scientists and then develop from there and on a similar note uh i was speaking about the different value propositions for different actors so here we have phds people from masters uh postdocs pis we have universities uh how you know, the, the question is similar, like how to align the incentives that kind of like align the desire for these people to be able to contribute to the platform. Is there a specific segment that you see as, you know, more with more potential to be interested in the platform and actually use the platform? Thank yeah, I, I think I think that's a really uh, interesting question. Um, my opinions on that is, uh, again, it comes to Patrick. So what's the what's the direction of the companies, right? If we you know, there are uh, one example is, uh, uh, is, 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 is iPhone, right? People have a different need on iPhone. People use iPhone for different things. So what they, what they do is they basically plaf provide a platforms to allow other uh, engineers, software engineers to develop new apps. Basically at the end, the iPhone is a platform to provide uh, other use, uh, other uh, developers to 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 kind of like uh, fulfill those needs, those are only fit to a small group of uh, uh, people, but not to everyone. So I think um, maybe one day this hub will also become a platform that allows other um, developers to develop a specific like, uh, uh, apps to uh, fulfill the need for a smaller group. Cool, great question. Um, yeah, so for the last 10 minutes, uh, I'd like to kind of shift the topic over to the governance system that you proposed to you. Um, you mentioned that there would be kind of like three groups. One is the team working on the platform. Another would be like a scientific advisory board. And then the third is capital investors. And I guess the fourth is like the actual users of the platform. Mm -hmm. Can you go into like a, this is a topic that's like talked about a lot in the DSI community like how decentralized should governance for platform be while still being able to like iterate quickly and like act as a tech startup. So yeah, I wonder if you can go into a little bit of detail over like how you see like the ideal governance of a platform like this and then talk about it as a group for a little bit. Yeah, I, that, that, that's a very really good question. So, uh, you know, 
it's um, you know I grew up in into I, I would I would like to compare it to this kind of like a particular system. I grew up in in, in China, so I stayed in China for twenty years. So I know very well uh, how the Communist Party works, and also I stayed in in the Western country, so about twelve years. I also know uh, how the democratic system works. So I like it. You know, I, I feel both system has their you know, you know, own benefits, and the ideal way is like how we can borrow the the benefits or the advantages from the two systems and build into this new uh, this platform to build a, a new we call it a new probably a new uh, democracy or democratic systems. You know, I, I think for the general users from you know governing this platform is probably not the, the thing we're most interested in, in in terms of how to use the platforms. But we can like we are, you know, uh, but we also want to, as from the user's uh, perspective, I will also want to have the power to say no, or uh, I'll have the channel to say something if uh, there is something wrong uh, on my side. So I think that's the uh, the the key of the of the system is basically to give the users their you know a channel to voice or also as I mentioned in the in the system if there is a big decision and that is rejected by a certain amount of users on the platform this decision uh, you know is basically uh, rejected you know such such uh, such criteria I mean I I still think the general uh, daily you know activities. Uh, can still be managed by the by the by the companies. Uh, it just uh, um, give the users to make big decisions, or uh, you know, give the channels for them to uh, to voice their concerns or need. Totally. Well, one thing we've thought about a little bit with Research Hub is like we're replacing a board vote with a community vote. So, like anything that would traditionally go to board approval in like a regular standard like U.S. C Corp would go to a community vote instead. But even this is like not the perfect, I think, like framing of the decision because there are things like, hey, you know, we just hired a new employee, like let's approve the equity grant, where that's probably like below the awareness of like what most users want to participate in. So I think defining like what topics would go to a community vote, where you say like these are the big decisions that the user base needs to have veto power over, that's a that's a difficult thing. So curious. Like, if, if you have any just like off the top of your head ideas that you know would qualify for that type of like decision making or you can basically um if uh, you know if you worry about uh things like this uh you no know, I, I think for a decision you can maybe you know maybe you can for any decisions you can have uh, like something like uh, uh let's say uh a few days one two three days like uh, periods if uh if uh, you make the decision and you see a huge uh, fight back from the user communities, then you can basically trigger uh, a, a, a user vote. Um, something like that. I, I don't really know if that can work well or not. But again, it's like uh, basically you know, give the users the, 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 the chance to say no. Oh, I like that idea. That that's pretty good. If it's like retrospective, like a certain portion of users are upset about a given decision, it can trigger some kind of like recall vote or something like that. It's, mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, yeah. So we have about five minutes left. Does anybody have any last questions before we wrap up on the journal club and talk about the bounties uh, designs? Cool. Well. If not, um, thank you so much for coming. You this is this was a blast. Like, really appreciate it. Um, looking you. forward to to seeing more comments on uh, research help on your paper. Great, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you for inviting me, and thank uh, everyone for participating in the conversation. I really uh, you know, learned a lot for everyone. Cool, thank you. So I'll stop. Okay. The recording.